And now the next person we'll talk will be Ken. Let me do a quick intro for Ken. Uh, please bring up the PPT. So Ken has been the, uh, the CEO for uh, Van Gogh. Uh, he has been establishing two companies in the past. One of them is Anka. Another one is called uh, uh, IGT. Now this is a third company for Ken. So he's going to talk about the imaging for AR. And Ken, you have 10 minutes. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, so uh, Vango Imaging is a uh, computer vision software company. Uh, our specialty is uh, real-time 3D capture. So um, first of all, one thing I'd like to add is uh, I'm very excited about where we are as a, in the technology industry. Um, my first job was uh, back in 70s as a computer programmer, as a high schooler. Uh, so that wasn't so unusual back then because not too many peop people knew how to program back then. So, um, but you know, 40 years went by, and I kind of looking back at this last 40 years, uh, you know, I, I have to be a little disappointed, you know, because I thought I'd be living in the future, but clearly we're not, right? I mean, you know, I'm expecting flying cars and trip to Mars, and it just hasn't happened, but. You know, certainly last, you know, let's say three to five years, I mean, we're really working on some really good stuff. You know, AI, uh, you know, the autonomous driving, uh, drones, uh, and of course, AR, VR. So, you know, it's, it's a pr pretty interesting time for me, uh, especially. So, uh, today uh, I want to talk about computer vision, um, how it applies. Uh, many of the speakers uh, previously uh, covered some of these topics, so I'm going to kind of go through some of these slides fairly quickly. Um, where's the, uh, how do you? Oh, I, uh, how do I go to the next slide? Okay, got it. It's PDF. All right, so uh, we're based in uh, uh, right side Washington, D.C. We have a team of really uh, great uh, computer scientists. Uh, this, they've been doing 3D computer vision for about six years. Um, as I mentioned, we have, uh, we are, we're, our focus is real-time 3D capture, objects and scenes. Uh, but also, we recently started working on a uh, uh, remote uh, teleportation technology, which is being able to share these uh, 3D uh, contents uh, across uh, low bandwidth network, uh, which uh, we hope to bring to the market uh, later this year. Uh, we are currently working with some of the top tier uh, technology companies to uh, make these uh, computer vision uh, uh, realizable as a real tr true commercial product. Um, so, you know, what is visual perception? The same thing as what we do. We look at the our surroundings, uh, identify objects and scenes, uh, track them and interact with them. So uh, as I mentioned, you can use it for a lot of different uh, applications, uh, including facial recognition, uh, autonomous driving, and definitely AR, VR. It's a core piece of AR, VR. And in near future, basically every device, okay, mobile, IoT, uh, once again, definitely AR, VR, HMDs. The computer vision part of it, the, uh, the tracking, recognition, is going to be a standard feature. So it, it is a requirement for these devices. So uh, one, of the, one of the use cases, obviously, uh, you know, that's, that's been talked about is uh, being able to train, um, recognizing object, overlaying uh, graphics on top. Or, uh, and then, or, and, and capture uh, objects as a true 3D model. Uh, we developed kind of a unique way of capturing a, a 3D model where we use computer vision where you can just take the object in your hand, rotate it around in front of the camera. Less than one minute, you get a holistic 3D model of that object. Uh, we're now applying that technology to a scene capture 
um, it's, it's a great use of real-time computer, computer vision. Um, and, and it is uh, solely needed because, for example, we're working with one of the uh, e-commerce companies. They want every product on their e-commerce site as a 3D model. And I'm sure some of the manufacturing companies would like to do that as well. You, you actually be surprised that most of the uh, products and objects in, in our real world does not have a equivalent CAD models, uh, definitely not a holistic CAD models. Um, so then we talked about the uh, remote collaboration, collaborations uh, with that. So, but the challenge of, mo uh, challenge of uh, computer vision in mobile is, is very extreme. It's a very complex algorithm. Uh, and then on, and give, even with that, then you gotta run this on this ARM processor, which is very low power. You gotta worry about battery consumption, power consumption. Uh, you have heat problems, you know, because it's running on the background constantly. So that, that uh, one of the previous speakers uh, alluded to that as well. So it is a very difficult problem. We're just at the very beginning of solving these issues. Uh, it will take some time, but good news is uh, there's, a lot, there's been a lot of advancements in many of the uh, areas in computer vision, especially last three years. The, the, the advancement in the, uh, the research in the last three years is just remarkable compared to previous 10 years or previous 20 years. So it's, it's really great to see that. Uh, and then, um, so let's go through this real quick. Then the, uh, so we developed this concept called what we call dynamic slam. What is it? It's just uh, really, you know, take a slam, but make it a lot more robust that can work in a real world. Uh, and not just any real world, dynamic real world, right? With changes, movements, and uh, where things are changing, but do it very efficiently and accurately. Um, and one of the ways we do that is the use of 3D depth sensors. So 3D depth sensor is fairly new, although you know, it first came out as a uh, Microsoft Connect. Um, but uh, it, it is a uh, really a good, uh, good way to get a very accurate, uh, accurate uh, measurement of the scene and to uh, recognize the scene and, or objects as well. Uh, and an important thing is the 3D depth sensor, even in a very dynamic scene, it will give you the reliability with the minimal processing. So that, that's what allows a real-time interaction. And so I just throw this block diagram in there. It's, it's very complex, uh, and it is. Um, and, uh, but you know, good news is a lot of, a lot of things are coming together. Uh, we're adding more things uh, as a roadmap going forward, uh, one of which is obviously to uh, interact with the neural networks out uh, that's being developed uh, in parallel as well. So eventually, um, kind of combining it all together, everything coming together to provide a really a great, uh, uh, you know, the visual perception, hopefully this will be the year that it will really take off. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Ken, that's very good.